the case for buying gold options. Holy smokes, Errol. We this, covered is, this. this is controversial, my friend, because <laughs> you and I were brought up by, you know, the old heads that we were around were like, you don't buy options, friend. Right. You sell options. You sell strangles. You sell straddles. You sell iron condors. Uh, the market goes down. You sell people puts. You sell them that insurance. I want to make a case for buying options. Do you have any experiences in buying options in your past? Um, yes. When when I've just been curious over the past year, learning options here at TasteWorks, I'll get curious and, and I'll buy some stuff, but nothing on the regular. Yeah, I, I feel like it. Long options is for the most part, and now I'm going to try to make a case for the reverse of this. Buying options is a sucker play. Let's face okay. it; like okay. it, it's it's usually a sucker play, um, but it's also usually the, the the first thing that people do because it's like it's the easiest thing, right? Like, right. oh, I'll buy a call option for a hundred bucks, and I'm risking a hundred bucks, and I make money if the market goes up. It's it's all defined risk. You can only lose as much as you pay, and it's it's kind of simple to understand before getting into short options and like uh, you know different margins and and uh, different defensive. Power, yeah. yeah, like a, a bunch of stuff in short options that's just a little bit more complex, but historically has been the more profitable trade. But let's make a case here. And also don't forget to subscribe to the Small Exchange on YouTube. If you are watching, we got a bunch more content on uh, uh, gold options and everything else. And if you have any uh, historical uh, cases where maybe buying options worked out or didn't work out, make sure you uh, you at me or Errol on uh, Twitter or leave a con comment to the video. Uh, we'd love to hear about your different cases for buying or selling options, but I want to make a case here for a not sucker play in buying options. We have gold volatility right now at its lows. This is GVZ, the gold IV index has gotten as high as above 30% all the way down to 16% right now. The gold ETF, GLD, showing an IV rank of 9% and an IV itself uh, of 16%, just like you saw here in this chart as gold has calmed down a little bit. Now, something that I think is interesting, Errol, is we have spree options, uh, the small metals futures, options on this market, Errol, that has gold and silver. Now, mm -hmm. silver traditionally is about twice as volatile as gold, and it's about 30% of this market. The spree options right now have an IV of 15%. So tell me how I'm going to throw a more volatile market into the underlying, and we're going to have a lower IV on the whole. I think I see maybe not like an arbitrage opportunity, but an opportunity to buy really low IV in the spree options. Uh, no, I, I see what you're saying. So we're so since this is fairly new to me, or buying options, we're, this is looking attractive because the implied volatility is lower right now. Yeah, very applied volatility is low. We're telling me that options are, you know, with an IV rank below 10%, that's mm -hmm. pretty much as cheap as options have been mm -hmm. in this market for the last year. Now you can go do that in gold. They're they're very cheap in gold, but in spree, you have actually a slightly lower IV okay. and 30% of this index uh is silver, I which see, is I a see. market that's that's twice kind of as volatile as gold. Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. And so I I like, and I put this on yesterday, I bought the straddle in Spree to see as a little experiment. I 99% okay. of the time I'm on the short side of options, but I'm like, man, this IV is really low and there's silver in there. Now, if you want, Errol, if you're like, okay, you're kind of getting me with IVs low, Spree has silver and it can be a little bit more volatile. If you want to throw a kicker on top of that, Errol, if you want to actually try to arb out a little opportunity. I'm looking at the long straddle and spree and the short iron fly in GLD. What do you say? Both about of those. That? Both of those. Yeah, that's exactly right. So we'd be buying that spree implied volatility and selling the gold implied volatility. Okay. That's different. That's new. It's a new idea. It's absolutely new. And I know it's a little complex, but I want to quickly throw up on the platform this these trades and show yeah. you how we make money in this or how we potentially lose money in this. So let's go to spree in here. And I want to get rid of my positions so that 
Um, okay, we don't have show positions. Beautiful. So market's at 71. I would look at buying the at the money straddle in here for about, uh, yeah, $2.60, whatever you want to put it in at and try to get filled here. So two dollars, two hundred and sixty bucks. That oh, sorry. Yes, you're right. Oh my gosh. Buying this for 260 bucks. That's the most that we can lose. My buying power is messed up because I have a bunch of positions in here. Mm -hmm. Um and, and so right there, 260 bucks here for this straddle. If the market moves down four bucks, great. We're making like a hundred bucks or more. If it moves up four, five, six bucks, we're making money, man. That's really nice. Now to hedge to finance. This 260 bucks, Errol, we're going to go over to GLD and we're going to sell the $3 wide iron fly for $2.50. Essentially, okay. if the market, so we financed our long straddle. If the market stays right here, Errol, mm -hmm. we pretty much scratch. We take like a $10 loss. Mm -hmm. That's fine. If the market, if metals go bust and they fall out of bed or they skyrocket rocket back to the highs, we're going to lose you know, 50 or a hundred bucks on this iron fly here in, in GLD, but our spree options should be making a bunch of money. Should be making, you know, a hundred, 200, 300 bucks in there. The place where we lose though, is if metals move just a little bit lower or just a little bit higher in here and we lose on this iron fly, say, you know, a hundred or, or so bucks and our straddle in spree uh, is only worth like a hundred bucks. That's where we could find a scenario that we're out maybe like a hundred dollars on that. But I, I really like this strategy in here, looking at buying spree options, selling GLD options. What uh, do we kind of call this one? Man, I don't know. This is like okay. a cross product. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even know. Cross product, mm -hmm. like a defined risk straddle or something. No, I like it. I like this one. I was trying to and, uh, I was trying to stay with you in in putting it on at the same time, but it's kind of new, so I was falling behind. I'm trying to put it on. So yeah, so we'll work. Yeah. Um, actually, no, I'm just gonna try to get this filled for everybody out there. Sorry, producer John, we will get out of here in a second. Um, let's see. So there, I sold my Iron Fly, uh, the 169, 172, 175 Iron Fly. And now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just lift the offer in this. I'm going to buy the 71 straddle in uh, spree. And uh, it's nice. I could really stand to lose maybe a hundred bucks in this trade, a uh, worst case scenario, a hundred bucks or so. But if metals really get cooking, volatility picks up from these lows, IV rank of 10%, then we could make, you know, 200, 300 bucks. If spree gets, you know, to 76, 77 or falls down uh, in the mid sixties, uh, a nice little trade in there, Errol. Yeah. Especially with where metals is at right now. So we'll see what we get. Awesome. Thanks my friend for joining me. Make sure you check out Errol on today's assignment and also follow him on Twitter and TikTok and everywhere else. You're the best Errol. Everybody, thanks so much for watching. We'll be back with more small stakes tomorrow, but Splash in the Futures is coming up next. Stay tuned for that. Peace.